now list and lie ye gentlemen, and I'll tell you the verity, how they have dealt with a banished man, driven out of his country. When as he came on Scottish ground, as woe and wonder be them among, Full much was their traitory, they robbed the Earl of Northumberland. When they were at the supper set, before many goodly gentlemen, they fell to flouting and mocking both, and said to the Earl of Northumberland, What makes you be so sad, my lord, and in your mind so sorrowfully? In the north of Scotland tomorrow there's a shooting, and thither thou'st go, my lord Percy. The butts are set, and the shooting is made, and there's like to be great royalty. And I am sworn into my bill, thither to bring my lord Percy. I'll give thee my hand, Douglas, he says, and by the faith in my body, if thou wilt ride to the world's end, I'll ride in thy company. And then bespake the good lady, Mary a Douglas was her name, ye shall bide here, good English lord, my brother is a traitorous man. A traitor stout and strong, as I'll tell you the verity, for he's taken deliverance of the earl, and into England he'll deliver thee. Now hold thy tongue, thou goodly lady, and let all this talking be, for all the gold that's in Loch Leven, William would not deliver me. It would Break truce between England and Scotland, and friends again they would never be. If he should deliver a banished earl, was driven out of his own country. Hold your tongue, my lord, she says, there is much falsehood them among. When you are dead, then they are done, soon they will part them friends again. me any trust, my lord, I'll tell you how you best may be. You'll let my brother ride his ways, and tell those English lords truly. How that you cannot with them ride, because you are in an isle of the sea. Then ere my brother come again, to Edinburgh Castle I'll carry thee. I'll deliver you unto Lord Hume, and you know a true Scots lord is he. For he hath lost both land and goods in aiding of your good body. Marry, I'm woe, woman, he says, that any friend fares worse for me. For where one saith it is a true tale, then two will say it is a lie. When I was at home in my realm among my tenants all truly, in my time of loss wherein my needs stood, they came to aid me honestly. Therefore I left many a child fatherless, and many a widow to look one. And therefore blame nothing, lady, but the woeful wars which I began. If you will give me no trust, my lord, for no credence you will give me, and you'll come hither to my right hand, indeed, my lord, I'll let you see. Says I never loved no witchcraft, nor never dealt with treachery, but evermore held the highway, alas, that may be seen by me. If you will not come yourself, my lord, you'll let your chamberlain go with me. Three words that I may to him speak, and soon he shall come again to thee. 
James when it came that lady before she let him see through the weave of her ring how many there was of English lords to wait there for his master and him but who be yonder my good lady that walks so royally on yonder green yonder is Lord Hunston Jamie alas he'll do you both tree and tea and who be yonder thou gay lady that walks so royally him beside yonder Sir William Drury Jamie and a keen captain he is and tried how many miles is it, thou good lady, betwixt yon English lord and me? Marry thrice fifty mile, Jamie, and even to seal and by the sea. I never was on English ground, nor never see it with my knee. But as my wit and wisdom serves, and as the book it telleth me, my mother, she was a witch woman, and part of it she learned me. She would let me see out of Loch Leven what they did in London City. But who is yonder, thou good lady, that comes yonder with an austern face? Yonder, Sir John Forster, Jamie, methinks thou shouldst better know him than I. Even so I do, my goodly lady, and ever, alas, so woe am I. He pulled his hat over his eyes, and, Lord, he wept so tenderly. He is gone to his master again, and even to tell him the verity. Now hast thou been with Mary, Jamie, even as thy tongue will tell to me. But if thou trust any woman's words, thou must refrain good company. It is no words, my lord, he says, yonder the man she lets me see. How many English lords there is, is waiting there for you and me. Yonder I see the Lord Hunsden, and he and use of the third degree. A greater enemy indeed, my lord, in England anywhere none have ye. And I have been in Loch Leven the most part of these years three. Yet had I never no outrage, nor good games that I could see. And I am thus bidden to yonder shooting by William Douglas all truly. Therefore speak never a word from thy mouth that thou thinks will hinder me. Then he writhed the gold ring off his finger and gave it to that lady gay. Says that was a legacy left unto me in Harley Woods where I could be. Then farewell heart, and farewell hand, and farewell all good company. That woman shall never bear a son, shall know so much of your privity. Now hold thy tongue, lady, he said, and make not all this dole for me. For I may well drink, but I'll never eat, till again in Loch Leven I be. He took his boat at the Loch Leven, to sail now over the sea and he hath cast up a silver wand says fare thee well my good lady the lady looked over her left shoulder in a dead swoon there fell she go back again douglas he said and i will go in thy company for sudden sickness yon lady has taken and ever alas she will but dee if aught come to yonder lady but good, then blame it sore that I shall be. Because a banished man I am, and driven out of my own country. Come on, come on, my lord, he says, and let all such talking be. There's ladies enough in Loch Leven, and for to cheer yonder gay lady. And you will not go yourself, my lord, you'll let my chamberlain go with me. We shall now take our boat again, and soon we shall overtake thee. 
Come on, come on, my lord, he says, and let now all this talking be. For my sister is crafty enough to beguile a thousand like you and me. When they had sailed fifty mile, now fifty mile upon the sea, he had forgotten a message that he should in Loch Leven do truly. He asked how far it was to that shooting that William Douglas promised me. Now fair words make fools fain, and that may be seen by thy master and thee. But you may have think it soon enough, whenever you that shooting see. Jamie pulled his hat now over his brow, I wot the tears fell in his ear. And he is to his master again, and for to tell him the verity. He says fair words make fools vain, and that may be seen by you and me. For we may have think it soon enough, whenever we that shooting see. The earl said, Jamie, hold up thy head, and never let thy heart fail thee. He did it but to prove thee with, and see how they'd take with death truly. When they had sailed another fifty mile, other fifty mile upon the sea, Lord Percy called to him himself, and said, Douglas, what wilt thou do with me? Look that your bridle be white, my lord, that you may go as a ship at sea. Look that your spurs be bright and sharp, that you may prick her while she's away. What needeth this, Douglas, he says, that thou needest to flout me? For I was counted a horseman good before that ever I met with thee. A false Hector hath my horse, and ever an evil death may he deem. And Willie Armstrong hath my spurs, and all the gear belongs to me. When they sailed another fifty mile, other fifty mile upon the sea, they landed low by Bardic's side, a deputed lord landed Lord Percy.